So what is up guys, Nick here, helping you to master your technology and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about the Samsung Galaxy Note 10. After three months of use, this one's relatively new, but not new anymore. But this is a smaller edition, the one that didn't get as much press. And I just want to share with you what I think this phone represents now that it's, you know, gotten discounts. Is it still worth it? Things of that sort. Okay, guys, so the first thing I want to talk about is this phone's feel in hand. We're talking about a phone that is like really light at the same time, offering up a very nice screen size at 6.3 inches OLED. Now, this phone is curved, so not quite a flat display, but that gives it the illusion that it's actually larger than it is. So I really enjoyed how much screen space over my time using it, the Note 10 Plus, not the Plus, the smaller version here has offered. The Plus offers even more, but this one right here, even though it's not too, I would say small, it's also not too large, but it's still giving you a nice stretched out screen. Not only that, this screen also does feature Gorilla Glass 6 on the front and it's sandwiched around an aluminum frame, which has felt very thin and pretty premium as well. So I gotta say that overall, I've been very happy with the feel and hand of the Note 10. Actually, I like the way it feels more than a Note 10 Plus because a Note 10 Plus is a little bit large and I think too large for some people. So uh, thumbs up here still. If you're looking for a phone feel in the hand, this is a pretty good one. One thing I will mention though is that because this is a square phone, it doesn't give you the most comfortable fit in the corners. So it kind of digs into your palm a little bit when using the Note 10 here. But overall, it's still a premium feeling phone. You're definitely not going to feel like you got some phone that feels cheap for the money. Okay guys, so moving on to our display. Now the Note 10 is offering up not a quite a 2K display. It's actually a 2280 by 1080p. So uh, it's not the sharpest, but still, you know, it's still a very good display because it is a dynamic AMOLED display, which means that it's not as saturated as it used to be, but you still have a natural mode and a vivid mode if you want that. But still, if you throw it in vivid mode, it's got plenty of contrast, colors look good. And um, let's put on a wallpaper that has maybe like a, a lighter color so we can see how that whole does get in the way sometimes. It's just not really a big bothersome to me. A lot of applications, when you do open them up, it kind of hides that hole. Like here in the weather, you can see it's a black color background. Now let's go into another application, say the files application. You could see right here, yeah, it is there, but at the same time, when we're scrolling through stuff, your eyes are not centered up here. So I don't find this to be too big of a deal here for the Note 10. So I wouldn't worry too much about that if you had your eyes set on this phone. But okay, so how about three months later with the video experience? So we can hit play. You can see that the audio is plenty loud on here. And if I go ahead and pinch in, there you can see that hole in display does present itself once again. Again, I would love to see Samsung bring a display that doesn't have that here on the next version of this phone, potentially. But really, again, it's not really bothersome to me. So if you're thinking about getting this phone and you're like, I don't know, it's got a hole in display, I wouldn't really worry about that. Uh, one thing I will say is that it doesn't have that 90 hertz display on here, so it's not as smooth as, say, OnePlus devices or even Google Pixel 4, but it's not like it's a slow display and the phone's not slow at all. It's just, you know, it's not 90 hertz, so it's not that super silky smooth feel. Okay, so let's discuss my experience with the in-display fingerprint sensor. After my time using it, well, it's pretty good. I mean, it works well. And this is a debatable topic for a lot of people, whether this is better than fingerprint sensor that's hardware based. And for me, this works pretty well but I actually found it to be uh, sometimes inaccurate. Like if you're not pressing it right, it's not the best option I think on the market. I think that would probably go to uh, facial recognition if it does have a secure method, kind of like what you see on the Pixel 4, for example, or the iPhone's Face ID. Those, those type of biometric security systems, I think, are a little bit more convenient than the in-display. But one thing I do like about the in-display is that if you're laying it face down on a table, it's still easy to go ahead and unlock it. You see it missing right there. That's what I'm talking about right there. It's just, it's not always the most accurate, but I still really like that it's kind of forward thinking, having a 
display fingerprint sensor like right in the display is pretty high tech and uh, it feels that way even if it's not always 100 percent accurate okay guys so when talking about the galaxy note 10 when it comes to software what well, when you're buying into the system you're buying into two things either you want a bunch of features or you want an android phone that feels premium uh, but still gives you a lot to work with here in multitasking or maybe you want a productivity powerhouse with the s pen here Overall, one thing I really like about this phone over my time using it is just the fact that they took the Note 9's size screen at 6.3 inches. They allowed me to continue to use S Pen functionality on a more portable package. And that's really what's amazing about the Galaxy Note 10 here, the smaller one, is that it fits in your pocket better, it's lighter, but it's still offering this guy, the S Pen, which is a, sorry guys, my memory card filled up and I had to go and delete some old footage to finish out this video here. Uh, but yeah, like I was saying, just having the S Pen in this small of a package really uh, it just felt great because the note 9 was huge it was a huge phone so was the note 10 plus of this year note 10 plus 5g granted those are amazing phones and many people say they're better than this phone but this phone man uh it's just so small it's so light and it's still giving me s pen this is pretty freaking awesome here with the note 10 but when i say small i don't mean the screen is small i just mean the ergonomics the, the footprint of this phone is just not a lot to handle anymore and that's great because for those people who just thought it was too much i still think the note 10 is an awesome choice for people with smaller hands and a couple of features about the galaxy note 10 here that i didn't use too much was the s pen air actions i use them a lot on the note 10 plus but not this one so much but still, they're here if you want to do AR doodling, that's here as well. You have general controls like the camera, your media, things like that. It's pretty useful with the S Pen. I mean, it has a lot of functionality. You guys can also do reverse wireless charging with wireless power share, which allows you to charge other devices on this device. Pretty cool. So even though this is the smaller phone, it still gets all the neat features from the larger phone. Really what you're missing out on here is a larger battery and maybe a sharper screen. But other than that, it's still a fully featured Galaxy Note. So I haven't had any lag on this phone or pretty much any other Samsungs of 2019. They did a great job with their phones this year. And this thing can still multitask just about as good as the Note 10 Plus with 12 gigs of RAM. I don't see a big disparity. Although it's nice to have the more RAM, it doesn't really seem necessary or like you need it on this phone right here. So it does just fine with its eight gigs of RAM and also runs DeX very smoothly as well. So the Samsung Galaxy Note 10, while it isn't having expandable memory here, that's a big drawback for a lot of Note lovers. This one's still offering 256 gigabytes for less than the starting price of the iPhone 11 Pro, which offers 64 gigs. So you get what I'm saying here. This is a strong value when it comes to the onboard memory that comes with the phone right from the start. So when it comes to the camera quality here for the Galaxy Note 10, I actually really liked it here because again, with the smaller package, it's more easier to carry around, but you still have an excellent wide angle camera. You do have an excellent standard angle camera and a pretty good telephoto lens as well. It does have this, you know, AI feature right here that'll allow it to see things and kind of recognize what it is. Also, if we go into settings here, it's called the scene optimizer. If we go into settings here, we do have rear HD video that can shoot up to 4K at 60, which I do like here for this phone. Also, you can go all the way down to HD if you would like. Plenty of features going on here in Note 10. In addition to that, this phone also has live focus. It does have a pro mode. It does have a night mode. It does have a food mode. And uh, there's just so much to work with here on this phone, even live focus in video. What about the front facing camera? Not the 4K 60 from the iPhone, but 4K 30 and a higher megapixel at 10 megapixels than prior notes a pretty good here. So I do like this feature as well where we could back it out some. Yeah, I'm recording on some books. I didn't bring my big tripod today. So yeah, you got to work with what you got to work with. But overall, I really like this front facing camera and I like how all the features are very easy to use. They're all right here front and center. So it's not confusing to use this camera. We can come in a little bit closer if we don't have a group with us and video looks fantastic here from the front and 4K. No, it's not the best on the market, but it's up there. I mean, it's definitely one of the better phones you can get for a front-facing camera. 
So let's talk about the battery. I got this flip case on this one. This is a pretty nice case right here. It's pretty sleek here for the Galaxy Note 10. I'll leave a link to this one down below if you want to check it out. But this is the only thing I'm a little bit concerned about with the Note 10 here. And even now, as I've been using it for a while, I still got to charge this more than I would like. This phone is just not the the battery beast that you expect out of a Note series. Now, granted, if you're not a heavy user, you'll get through a day with this phone and maybe even a heavy user if he's not too heavy on it he or she might get through the day but it's not going to be with much battery to spare so the note 10 definitely a little bit disappointing here for me and my type of usage i'm actually only able to get through a little bit over half a day so let's say i wake up at nine in the morning eight in the morning um, i'm not able to get past say 7 p.m on this phone with my heavy type use one thing you can do if you're not getting through a day or you get this and you're a little bit worried about getting through a day is just put on medium power saving and that will get you at least an hour more battery life on this phone so we talked about the audio earlier my experience has been strong besides no headphone jack on here i i, I got used to using the headphone jack on the note 9 so using the note 10 it was a little bit weird because sometimes I was like, you know, I was in a habit of putting the the headphones I had right into the bottom and I'm like, oh, never mind. I'm on the Note 10. So it's kind of like a habit. You got to retrain yourself to remember that you're using Bluetooth. But once you do, you're going to be fine with this phone. And the Dolby Atmos does really boost up the volume a little bit here. If you turn this off, the speakers actually sound quite a bit quieter than they would uh, without this on. So do keep Dolby Atmos on if you want the best audio sound you can get out of this phone's speakers. And how has the phone call quality been for the Note 10? Well, as a matter of fact, the reception and the LTE performance has been very good here with the Qualcomm modem set up here. Very strong stuff. So I wouldn't worry at all about this element of the phone. The actual phone call quality was also pretty darn good here due to that connectivity. And uh, the callers had no issues hearing me, never had one dropped call with this phone and also because the speaker phones are very good here remember the audio we talked about this phone also has good speaker phone call quality so if you're the type of person who talks on the speaker you'll like how loud it is when speaking on this phone so in conclusion if you're after a galaxy note device and you never really liked how large they were but you were always intrigued by the s pen and uh, you also want to pay over a thousand dollars for the top of the line note this one should be high on your list of you know phones you might consider going into 2020. Now keep in mind the S11 is right around the corner um, so if you don't need the pen you might want to hold off and wait till those series of phones do get announced but the next Note series is probably a good bit away so if you're into the Note and you want a Note now this is not a bad option. So let me know your thoughts on it. Are you picking up the Galaxy Note 10? Did this video help you decide if you're going to get this phone or did you already order it? Are you already planning on ordering this phone? Share with us your questions, your thoughts, your comments, your experiences all below down in the comment section of this video. Thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Nick here helping you to master your technology. Subscribe if you haven't already and peace.